Hi, this is Soft Cell Video Productions, and I'm your host, John. This is episode number 152B. It's an addendum to electrical slab requirements. When I was going through my series of everything you need to know to build your house and every step you need to go through, I seem to have forgotten post-tension cables in the concrete. You see here two photos of post-tension cables protruding from the slab. Later, these steel cables will be stretched to several thousand pounds and then cut flush with the pad. They are put in because they prevent concrete cracks and add about five times the strength to the pad. The bad part is that if you forget to run underground pipes, these post-tension cables cannot be cut. However, they can be worked around. If you notice, the cables run about two inches below the surface of the pad. If you must run power to an island, you can cut the concrete no more than 1.5 inches deep and jackhammer a small trench big enough for a single piece of three quarter inch electrical conduit to fit into and still be covered with three quarters of an inch of concrete. If you wanted a sink, you have to jackhammer down at least eight inches without disturbing the post tension cable. Now some examples of what happens when you try to run the kitchen island conduit to an inside wall. In this example, you see four pipes all outside the wall. In the next photo, you see that the pipe comes out about an inch away from the wall. In the last photo, you see that it is impossible to get it wrong when you use an outside wall. With these issues covered, I would like to show you what a riser, ufer, and data installation should look like after the concrete has been poured. This is very clean work and is done by yours truly about two years ago on a custom home. Note that a home with post tension cables will have a stamp stating that, usually in the front center portion of the garage. And remember, these cables cannot be cut for any reason. Your comments are always welcome, and once again, thank you for watching.